for the candidates running for North Oaks Mayor. This forum is not open to the public and is not being live streamed. The reason for that is to ensure minimal chance of cable interruption. It is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. In addition, local cable channels will replay this forum on a schedule determined by their station. Candidates, if for some reason your internet connection is lost, please call in using your phone. My name is Liz Nordling and I do not live in North Oaks. I live in the city of Grant and I will be moderating tonight. The League of Women Voters is a trusted longtime nonpartisan volunteer organization that encourages citizens to participate in government. Our mission is to support voter education and voter rights. While the League studies and takes stands on issues, we do not support or oppose any candidate or any political party. The goal of our forums is for voters to learn more about the positions of the candidates who will be on the ballot November 3rd. All of the candidates for this race were invited to participate in this forum. The candidates for mayor of North Oaks are Mark Asman and Kara Reese. There is a third candidate, Alex Lagueros, and he uh, has a medical emergency and will not be participating tonight. Candidates will give their opening statements in alphabetical order. After that, the beginning speaker will be rotated for each question and then closing statements will be in reverse alphabetical order. A timer will show a card when you have 15 seconds left and then stop. Mark Asman, you may begin with your opening statement. You have one minute. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, hello, my name is Mark Asma, and I'm running for the city, the mayor for the city of North Oaks. I want to thank the League of Voters for hosting uh, this event and the opportunity to greet uh, the voters of the city of North Oaks. Thinking of what drives me to become mayor, a number of, of ideas come to mind. Foremost, I think, is the vision uh, by Louis Hill Jr. for the city and its development. My research shows that his intention for North Oaks was to honor the creator by leaving the creation more intact. His vision was to create a special community, to preserve and to retain the natural environment of the area. It meant laying out roads and lots to follow the contour of the land, preserving trees, developing building sites to complement and integrate the topography and preserving uh, vistas. It also meant privacy, private roads and land, and with that, a feeling of solitude in the community. Today, I continue to pursue those visions and values. To me, our privacy is important. Our security is important. I will work to protect uh, those precious attributes. Thank you. Thank you. Now with her opening statement is Kara Reese. Thank you, League of Women Voters. Hello, North Oaks. I'm Kara Reese, and I have been a resident of North Oaks for over 10 years. I grew up in this area and now Johannes and I are raising our three young children here. I've enjoyed serving on the city council for the past two years and on planning commission for four years prior. During my civic service, I've had the privilege of listening to many of your concerns and helping resolve issues. Safety and security is a top priority. We need to keep North Oak safe and improve crime prevention. My background, I'm a biomedical electrical engineer practicing law as a registered patent attorney. My technical scientific background gives me an in-depth understanding beyond law, understanding sustainable use of our natural resources. Over many years of my practice, I've developed effective and respectful communication skills. As mayor, I will continue to listen to your concerns and will encourage you to participate at council meetings. It's important to recognize you and to respectfully address your concerns. We are a community and must work together to make North Oaks an even better place. Thank you. Thank you. Now we will begin with questions. You each have one and a half minutes to answer. The question goes to you first, Kara. What is your understanding of the intent and rules of the open meeting law? And do you agree to abide by it? My understanding of the open meeting law is that it's a way to give notice to residents so they can be informed and participate. It also brings limits on the council so that way when you have over a majority, a majority or more present, that decisions aren't being made behind the scenes. It keeps the process transparent and it keeps the residents informed. I agree to abide by the open meeting law because I feel that it's a very important part of our process. 
If we're not transparent with our residents, we're not doing our job. We're here to serve and we're here to abide by the rules to keep the process more intact. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Mark Asman. Uh, sure. I, you know, the open meeting law is a very important part of uh, the laws that govern uh, our communities, our public government. It's a way to ensure that uh, secret meetings aren't held, that uh, a few uh, council persons or other public uh, entity officials aren't making decisions behind closed doors. It's an opportunity to ensure that uh, the sun shines on all the decisions that uh, our public uh, leaders uh, are making. So the law provides that you have to give notice of meetings and that there has to be uh, uh, discussions regarding uh, city business at public meetings that are appropriately noticed. And absolutely, I would agree to abide uh, by the open meeting law. Um, in my experience, I've, I'm a lawyer, I've litigated open meeting law violations, um, and I fully understand what the intent is, uh, is to keep uh, the decisions of the government uh, in, in an open and uh, um, uh, available process to the public. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any additional comments? I have an additional comment. I also think the open meeting law and the notice period for the open meeting law is very important because it gives our community and the residents an opportunity be to become informed, to do their research, to investigate, to review documents, to understand what decisions are being made the open meeting law is extremely important to preserve because it's intended to be transparent governance. So we must maintain it. Thank you. Mark, do you have any additional comments? No, thank you. Then we'll move on to the next question and it goes to you first, Mark. Sure. How do you think citizen comments should be incorporated into city council meetings? Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, and I'm glad it came up. Um, it's been my position uh, for many years. I used to be the president of the Homeowners Association and the way I conducted meetings then and now as chair of the Planning Commission, uh, my preference is to conduct meetings in a manner that is uh, welcoming to citizens uh, for uh, an opportunity to feel uh, like they're able to present opinions in a positive atmosphere. Uh, so it would be my uh, goal, my intent to ensure that city policies uh, incorporate uh, a citizen comment period to allow uh, uh, the council or the commission or, or anybody that uh, is, is available to listen and hear citizen comments. Doesn't matter to me what the topic is, uh, uh, but I, I fully intend to have a citizen comment period if elected uh, at every meeting, so any citizen can voice any concern about any topic. Uh, and I, I think it's a way for to feel connected, uh, a way for residents to feel like they get a chance to say what's bothering them, uh, and an opportunity for us uh, as council members to uh, to understand what some of the topics are that citizens are worried about, uh, and possibly take action. So yes, it's an extremely important part of uh, city meetings that I intend to ensure we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Kara Reese. Thank you. For me, the citizens comment um, belongs at the beginning of any meeting that we have. We had a discussion on council about this where it was suggested to either move them to the end of the meeting or get rid of them. And I was a strong advocate for putting them, maintaining them at the beginning. It's important that residents have the right to open the meeting and address their concerns. This is their First Amendment right. It gives them a microphone, it puts them on record, and it's very important that we maintain not only the public comments, but keep them at the beginning of the meeting. Um, it might be also nice if there's a, a big issue that comes up where people didn't feel like they were able to address the issue on the agenda to also add a rebuttal period maybe at the end of the meeting. But at the very least for First Amendment, for transparency, and to include residents in our process, we have to have the public forum period maintained. Um, we're council members and we're voted in to serve. And if we don't give the public a chance to address us either in person or now in COVID times via Zoom, then, then we're not as well informed. We are elected to interact with the public and to serve them and public forum public comments at the beginning
kind of meetings allows us to interact with residents. Thank you. Do Thank either you. of you have any additional comments? I do. Seems... I think, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I think that- Yes, go uh, right ahead. Sure. Uh, it's important that the council be approachable, I think, to the city uh, residents. And that is really one of the most primary fundamental ways that residents can come before uh, the council as a group and have an audience uh, and be heard. And it's extremely important. I definitely would defend every right of the citizens to have that at every meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Kara, do you have any additional comments? My only additional comment is pub the public comment section of the meeting should be dedicated to allowing the person to speak um, with respect, with civility, uninterrupted, and really allow them to feel comfortable voicing their opinion, whether it's positive, negative, supporting or against something, to allow that speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments, Mark? No, thank you. The next question goes to you first, Kara. Given the concerns of some residents, if elected, would you favor reversing the current council's approval of the Nord parcel preliminary plan? Just to repeat the question, make sure I understand it. Um, if it was before the council again, would I favor reversing the Nord parcel approval? Is would you favor reversing the current council's approval of the Nord Parcel preliminary, pre preliminary Plan. Thank you for repeating the question. With the Nord Parcel, um, there was a lot of changes that progressed during the application period. We had for about a year seen various types of plans come before us. And we have to do our due diligence and make sure that we're updating data, make sure we're looking out for the community and that the development is the best that it can be keeping safety in mind for the community, making sure that um, it's compliant with agreements, the PDA, to make sure that it complies with zoning and ordinances. The plans that were before uh, the Planning Commission had an extended boundary. It also did not take into consideration um, that the state, the climatologist, has determined that our area has high water tables, and this can impact health and safety. The current plans with an expanded boundary also included drain fields, which may also have a health impact. So I would be in support of reversing the plans. Um, another issue that I had was that NOAA was not, the whole board was not involved thoroughly in the process. And NOAA always needs to be involved when we're reviewing plans to make sure that it's compliant with warranty deeds and, and that the NOAA board is on task. I would also like to involve our Natural Resources Commission to make sure that they're reviewing it. Um, they've done a lot of research and work with water quality and other natural resources, so it would be very important to involve them. Ms. Hasman? Hi, good evening, thank you. Yes, uh, I think that's a very difficult question. We're now in a situation, uh, and I'm the chair of the Planning Commission currently, uh, that Nord parcel application has been before us for in, in early iterations a year and a half. It was studied intensively by city planners, city engineers, uh, by experts in their field who know uh, uh, environmental issues. And it was the recommendation of uh, city engineers, city planners, uh, city attorney, uh, that um, the plan appeared to comply and, and does comply with existing zoning and existing um, uh, the existing PDA, the plan development agreement. And so uh, at this point, I don't know uh, that there, uh, and I don't believe that there is science that would suggest uh, it's time to reverse course. Uh, that also, uh, I think importantly, uh, if you reverse course after granting uh, preliminary permission, including a grading permit, um, you're now taking away serious rights from a developer uh, that has given and received or received permission to to develop the area. Um, the issues that are involved with uh, water uh, have to do with the final plan, and if those those final plans aren't compliant with environmental uh, studies, then they stop and re we reevaluate them. 
So right now, as I sit here today, no, I can't make a decision about whether or not I would be in favor of reversing it because we don't have the information right now available to do that. Thank you. Additional comments, Carl? Yes, I have a couple. In approval of the plans, the approval was based on expiring data, delineation data from five years ago. And it's been stated multiple times by various people um, at the DNR that not only um, do we have these higher water levels, that data basically cannot be acceptable beyond three years. And so we have various in, um, approvals or plans that we relied on an approval that I believe we need to go open and a new de delineation study would be prudent. Thank you. Thank you. Additional uh, yes, comments, thank Mark? you. Uh, at the time, the Planning Commission and the City Council reviewed the NORD plans. All uh, studies were intact and valid. Uh, I, I would also note that uh, NOAA did have, the North Oaks Homeowners Association, uh, did have extensive involvement in the process, including submitting uh, at least two letters, studying the plans, and were definitely invited to come and speak and be involved. And so we did give the opportunity for the Homeowners Association to be involved. And uh, I think that's an important point. Uh, certainly the commission was uh, interested in their position. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on now to the next question. It goes to you first, Mark. How would you describe the relationship between the city and the North Oaks Company? Is the relationship transparent? <clears throat> the relationship um, is what the parties define it as. It is as the parties uh, practice that relationship. Uh, as a chair of the Planning Commission, from my standpoint, it's extremely important that we be transparent. Uh, so I have several expectations of how the company as the primary developer in the community needs to interact with the city. Uh, I do expect the company uh, when coming before the city to address planning applications for subdivisions to meet with city staff before uh, formally submitting the plans so they can go over issues. Uh, this is standard practice across municipal planning. Second, uh, when there's an actual uh, submission that's made to the Planning Commission. I expect the company to be uh, honest. I expect the company to be candid in what they want to do. That's what I've observed the company do. Uh, they've submitted very clear plans, very few, uh, clear letters. Here's what we'd like to do. Uh, so it's extremely important from uh, my standpoint that there be transparency. Uh, third, uh, I think from a due process standpoint for the applicant or the company as an applicant or any applicant that would come before the city, that they have the opportunity to feel like they got a fair shot. And so um, <clears throat> I think we've provided that uh, to, the, to the company and I think that um, we've dealt with uh, the company and the public uh, uh, above board uh, in what they would like to do with, with their development projects. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Kara Reese. Thank you. The role of the company is very interesting. North Oaks has an interesting history working with the company. Um, they're a development company, a land owner company, and they're involved with these initial development plans and then sell off their rights. So their, their involvement with us is initial and then it goes to a private entity. Previously, um, working with the company, it was very um, community focused, working with the company, and I'm talking decades ago, focused on natural resources. Um, if you fast forward to the year 2020, and what I've observed the past year is the company has changed its, its approach and it's more profit driven. I'm seeing a substantially decreased um, respect for natural resources. And we have an agreement. There has been some pop up discussion with the company where there were arguments about development, you know, every 10 years or so. So we had entered into a PDA with the company to kind of calm all the residents and, and work out an agreement for the rest of the development. And instead of, of staying true to that, the terms of that agreement and that study in the EAW and all of the disclosure and plans that were presented and environmental studies based on that, what I'm seeing now is a dedication to increasing densities and decreasing lots. And it it's basically goes to profit. I would like a more transparent relationship with the company. 
I would like to be um, more compliant with the PDA and I would like to improve relations with the company so it's more transparent with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, additional comments, Mark? Uh, yes, thank you. I, I do think the PDA controls is a development agreement that was uh, signed by the city and the company back in 1999. Uh, there is supposed to be decennial reviews that happen every 10 years. Uh, that uh, the, the current city council was late in develop and having that uh, agreement, but um, I think reasonable evaluations and interpretations of that agreement uh, need to happen. And I, I haven't seen some of that uh, with, uh, with some members of the current council. And it's, it's important that we respect uh, that agreement. Thank you. The, um, respect for the agreement as well. I think it's very important. And I would also like the company to be more transparent and its work in communication with our council as a whole. I feel that um, their transparency is to certain individuals on the council. And I would like to have it more even, more, more unbiased, more open discussion, and, and more feedback from the council about plans instead of um, communication with certain members of council. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. It goes to you first, Kara. What does transparency in public office mean to you? Have you been transparent in your current role in the city's government? And how would you improve transparency at the council level? Transparency is a critical issue with city council. I've mentioned this before, as city council members, we're there to serve the public. So the service that has to be transparent so the public understands what we're doing for them. If we're upholding our promises during elections um, and, and how we're fulfilling our duties. Transparency to me is making documents available quickly to residents, making conversation conversations happen during public meetings. It's upholding the open meeting law and it's giving the public the opportunity to speak and have discussions with us. Um, we don't do any justice or service to the public if we're having, you know, meetings behind the scenes, if we're, we're making decisions without the, the public's involvement, without public feedback. We have to have it be an even exchange and transparency helps us for us to conduct fair discussions with the public so they understand our process, they understand that we're upholding our duties and we're being fair to what we've promised them during elections. Thank, thank you. you. The question now goes to Mark Asman. Yes, thank you. Uh, transparency uh, seems to be a, a, a hot topic um, and it should be. Um, I think that uh, transparency uh, in a lot of ways means no surprises. No surprise experts at the last second. No surprise uh, evidence at the last minute. It means collaborating uh, with, with the city. It means working with city staff, city managers, city engineers. So we all are on, are on the same page in evaluating scientific studies. It does not mean um, uh, operating on behalf of the city without authority. Transparency means uh, that everybody knows what's happening and that we're in full sunlight as to what uh, our goals are and what we're doing. And I think that's a very important part of it. And so if elected, uh, there's not gonna be surprises. There's not going to be um, uh, you know, secret retentions of experts. There's going to be uh, a collaborative effort uh, centralized through the city offices so they can manage investigations. Um, there's going to be uh, an open discussion of what uh, intentions are, what concerns are, and I think more importantly, there's got to be a change in how the council is getting along. Uh, so uh, if concerns are raised, regardless of what they are, they need to be received in a respectable and respected manner and, and vetted. And, and moving forward in that manner. And I think that's a big change that needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments, Kara? Yes, I also think that transparency also speaks to not having meetings back to back, to giving the public enough time in between a planning commission meeting and a city council meeting so the public has enough time, so the city council members have enough time to review the documents. It also is giving 
the city council members and other officers um, enough time to review documents and not posting them at the last minute or not failure to posting them at all. Getting a full review of the process. And, and what I've seen happen so far is these last minute meetings, um, plans being changed at the last minute and decisions being made almost behind the scenes. So when we come to the meetings, it's a foregone conclusion. Transparency is a discussion. Thank you, your time is up. I'm sorry. Mark, do you have any additional comments? Oh, thank you. Then we'll move on to the next question. It goes to you first, Mark. What do you say to the residents of our community who have literally lost decades long friendships because of the vocal opposition to the East Oaks development? The East Oaks Development Agreement was uh, negotiated after a very long process 20 years ago, uh, more than that, in 1999 and, and the years before that, between the company and the city. Uh, it formulated <clears throat> the remaining, uh, how the remaining land would be developed within the city. And so uh, I think current city council, current planning commission implementing that agreement um, uh, are guided by what's already been decided for the most part. Uh, it is unfortunate that some decisions, that some issues have caused uh, significant um, discord, significant disagreement uh, among residents. Um, um, but, uh, I, I, and I'm saddened to hear that that would cause a long-term loss of, of friendships. Um, but uh, the agreement uh, it says what it says. And it's up to me as a planning commission uh, chairperson or uh, as mayor uh, to implement uh, that agreement consistent with what I believe the oath of office is. And that's to be honest in my beliefs and, and the purpose. And in order to implement my oath, I simply have to follow what uh, that agreement prescribes. I understand that there could be um, uh, uh, some tense relations. Uh, but that is also part of the deliberative, deliberative process within the city in order to reach uh, consensus and a decision in moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Kara Reese. Thank you. Yes, so the East Oaks. Um, some concern in the community by residents. So the, the agreement basically was reached with the company. So all parties, the city, the residents, the company had agreed to the future approach to it. Um, I would imagine that some of the lost relationships as a result of the agreement may be the result of not maintaining some of the terms of it, interpreting the terms differently than was um, intended during the, the forming of the document, negotiation of the document. And when people change their mind, instead of maintaining compliancy with the document, maintaining the terms of the document, if they decide that increasing densities is suddenly okay, or, or going beyond what the scope of the document was, or not, you know, not doing the environmental research necessary for maintaining um, the natural resources. I can see that once again, people in this community are going to get upset because if you don't comply with that document, and the document was keeping the peace. Relationships might be affected because of it, because someone may change their interpretation of it. A simple result of this, and what I would recommend or advise these people if they want to maintain relationships, simply stick to the agreement. Compliance with the agreement, it limits the, dis the arguments, and it maintains friendships. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments, Mark? I do. I think that's the crux of it is uh, we've got one document uh, with one set of uh, terms and provisions and a lot of this comes down to uh, how it's interpreted and I think a fair reading uh, of the document uh, using plain language um, and plain terms uh, shows what densities are, shows what environmental obligations are and it's our obligation as city officials to again follow our oath in, in honesty and belief and purpose and the means to, uh, to implement uh, that agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments, Kara? Yes, um, I think that 
the interpretation of the of the document was changed. I think that the disagreement is coming because people are changing the interpretation, changing the goals of the agreement. Um, and instead of just sticking to a very simple interpretation as it was intended, um, would would result in more arguments. There's also EAW studies that were done at the time. And when you change plans from what was originally disclosed and agreed to, that EAW study suddenly, the environmental study comes into discussion. Arguments are over that as well because we're not maintaining our natural resources. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. It goes to you first, Kara. What have you done or will you do to support development and increase the tax base of our community? I support development through the PDA. I think that looking at those terms and being compliant to as it was originally intended, um, the majority of the agreement is still intact. And as the previous community was in agreement with that, they were comfortable with it. And so we need to maintain the terms of that agreement within the scope of how the agreement was intended, the original spirit. So maintaining densities. Um, Increasing a tax base is going to happen as we go through a measured development, not forcing all the plans through today like, being, like is being done right now, but a measured phase development as the agreement is written. The, the tax base will increase. It was, it was um, designed to increase measured with target densities. Do we need to increase our densities? So that way we, I don't believe so. Um, North Oaks, we have a very healthy tax base already. And when you increase it over that, that agreement, the target, what we've always planned for with the Met Council and outside of North, and outside of North Oaks, we don't need the additional resources. Um, when you do the additional densities to get an increased tax base, there's also negatives. There's gonna be more costs. There's gonna be more people. There will be, negatives that we also have to take into account. And simply saying, you know, all profit and spending, that's not a responsible way to develop. Thank you. Thank you. The question goes to Mark Asman. Yes, thank you. Uh, I've been involved as a planning commissioner uh, and, and for six years as a NOAA board of director. Uh, and through the board, we worked uh, for the development on uh, the Charlie Lake uh, development on the east side of the city, uh, sorry, the west side of the city, um, and then uh, also transitioning to the Planning Commission. I've been involved in uh, the several projects that have come before uh, the Planning Commission from, from the company and that ultimately um, I think uh, everyone would agree that prudent uh, and responsible planning via the uh, development agreement, the PDA, uh, is important. But I, I just simply disagree that people have changed the interpretation of the agreement. Um, the agreement is the agreement, and the interpretation is based on the language that's in it. The densities haven't changed. It's in there. Uh, the uh, environmental obligations haven't changed. It's in the agreement. There are provisions in the agreement that allow for um, uh, densities to be varied. It's very clear. Uh, there are provisions in there that require certain environmental uh, obligations. Uh, and until those can be shown that they need to be changed, uh, that uh, then there is no change in, in a reasonable interpretation. PDA for <laughs> too long, that um, uh, the only uh, change uh, would be from <clears throat> persons who want to advance a certain agenda that isn't reflected in that agreement, unfortunately. Thank you. Any additional comments, Kara? Yeah, I think the question was about tax base, actually, not about densities. Um, the change in interpretation question comes in due to a change in the planning. It was due to um, press homes developing the Northeast side Waverly Gardens. And there was evidence in the record that it was to be, some of the units were to be counted. Um, it was the decision of the, of the majority of the council to interpret that a particular way, which is impacting the rest of the agreement. With regard to the question, the tax base, um, we are healthy in North Oaks and we will increase our tax base by being compliant with the agreement. Thank you. Thank you, additional comments, Mark? 
I think just one. Uh, the city council and the company agreed on the Waverly issue 10 years ago in 2010. Um, that, you know, what, for worse, that change was agreed to by the parties. Um, and so that density that was implemented uh, and changed at that point uh, was an agreement of the parties and has to be respected. Uh, and now we're operating under that revised agreement and we've been so for, for 10 years. Uh, from a tax base standpoint, that was the question. And uh, I've been involved in, in developments that have contributed towards additional uh, taxes and responsible developments. Thank Beautiful you. developments. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. It goes to you first, Mark. Sure. What is your position on a home maintenance ordinance? Um, that's a hot topic, and I'm glad you brought it up, or I'm glad the residents uh, submitted a question like that. Um, as I've traveled around uh, the community uh, for, uh, for years, uh, but even more so, it's been on my radar as a, as a member of the Homeowners Association Board and also uh, as a member of the Planning Commission. Um, I think communities in our area across the country are going to have some type of official controls in place that would allow the city to uh, assist residents in ensuring that we, we keep up our homes. And I think that's important. Uh, I think it's a, a good opportunity to extend a reasonable, um, prudent uh, means to make sure that uh, the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens is preserved, the tax base of the community, uh, our, our homes, and our infrastructure is well maintained. And so I would never uh, uh, have a draconian approach to uh, you will fix this or you will fix that. But there are uh, reasonable methods that I believe should be in place uh, to, to allow the city to, to ensure that our, our housing stock uh, is, is valuable, is desirable by others uh, who want to move in here, um, and, uh, and therefore increasing uh, um, uh, the The question now goes to Kara Reese. Thank you. Um, North Oaks is a unique community. We have a very strong homeowners association. In order to do a type of housing maintenance, it would have to be something that we would need to collaborate with NOAA on. NOAA takes care of more of the aesthetics and the architectural stuff. And then the city would have to understand where they could start enforcing um, their ordinances and statute. In order to do a housing maintenance code, we would have to sit down with, with NOAA or review NOAA rules. I believe they just recently did a type of housing maintenance revision and look at where can we address the issue. You know, we talked about all of this new development going on in, in, in on the east side, and then we have a new west side as well and a new north side. How does that affect the old stock in North Oaks? And I think we do have to be concerned and supportive of making sure that the, the old part of North Oaks is maintained as well and not just all of the attention given to new construction, new construction. by just simply enforcing our current ordinances. We don't do any type of, of enforcement program right now. We might want to look at hiring an enforcement officer. A lot of cities have a specialist that enforce their, their ordinances. Um, we have to have a respectable program so that way we're not just enforcing, because some of these people may have financial economical issues. They might be fixed income. We have to be very considerate of some of the issues. So I believe that a housing maintenance code should be explored, but very respectfully. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments? Yes, thank you. While I, while I was on the uh, homeowners board, I wrote and drafted and had approved um, revised architectural supervisory committee rules to address distressed homes. Uh, and that's been sitting on the books for years now. Um, uh, so as part of uh, a collaboration with NOAA, uh, and an intent of the city to need to move forward with some type of uh, controls, someone has to take that first step. Uh, there are that govern what NOAA can do, but someone has to take the first step in order to 
uh, engage the community in, in making sure our housing stock is preserved. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments, Kara? Just one additional thought that usually the city puts together um, committees to explore the issue and that's one possibility. We could have a public hearing. We could um, discuss with the community, maybe a town hall about the issue and really open it up to the community and get feedback from the community about th what they want. We could also explore programs. I know for you know, low interest loans. Um, might, we might want to research some of that as well, or a committee could research that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question now, and it goes to you first, Kara. Do you think the city or the Ramsey County Sheriff's Department can or should do more to protect the safety, security, and privacy of North Oaks? If so, what would you suggest? In these times, 2020 has been a very interesting year. I think that we do need to look at our policing. We have to continue our policing, but we need to open up conversations with Ramsey County about training, about fairness, about more of a um, character-based policing, and really make sure that it reflects what we need as the community. It reflects what the residents' needs are and the feedback we've been getting. Um, we also have different pockets of types of crime. I think that our policing could be adjusted or strengthened in some areas to be responsible to mail fraud more often, or your packages might be stolen more often, or you might be on a, a road where there's more speeding. Um, we could also look at maybe um, public safety and just having eyes we could look at our, our emergency response plan in crisis situations. There's a lot we can do with policing. And this is again, something where we should work with NOAA and we should work with outside groups like Ramsey County. And we need to make sure that not only is training being done correctly, but that our representation of the police officer reflects our needs in our community. But yes, I believe that policing is a very important issue today and we do need to make sure that we're having these important conversations. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Mark Asman. Thank you. Um, yes, it is very important, safety and security. Uh, it's really one of the top issues that uh, citizens and residents are concerned about, at least in the polls and studies that I've seen. Um, I think it requires a proactive approach. City, um, County Sheriff's Department, as do a num number of other northern suburbs. So there's going to have to be some collaboration with the County uh, Sheriff's Department on a plan. And my proposal would be to collaborate uh, proactively so we're not reacting on any events uh, that may occur. Um, that's happening, but I don't think it's happening fast enough. Um, there needs to be uh, more of a plan in place in order to deal with pop up or crisis events that that may occur uh, unannounced or on, on short notice. There also needs to be a collaboration with, with NOAA uh, on how, how does NOAA uh, feel uh, about the city working with them to, to help at the entrances, to help with trespassing at the trails, to help with um, uh, issues where, where um, you know, crime is happening. There are issues that we see on Facebook all the time about uh, you know, persons getting picked up within the, within the community on drug charges or something. Those are, do we need, um, um, you know, other factors uh, like that. Security also involves slowing people down uh, at the, uh, on our roads. And so I think collaboration is important with the county and NOAA. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? Yes, I think also to follow up some of those comments, um, we, with the response of George Floyd, the city council, we had to look at our emergency response plan, but it's not a crisis response plan for civil unrest. And we need to develop something like that. We also need to revisit our ordinances and make sure that they're adequate, that we can enforce them. We do need to collaborate with NOAA. I have three young children. I live on a busy road and the policing issue is extremely important to me. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comments, Mark? Oh, thank and you. And we'll move on to the next question, and it goes to you first, Mark. 
How well is the North Oak City Council engaging the community and incorporating its feedback into North Oaks Thank you. I think that I think first and foremost, the city council was going to need to change its uh, citizen uh, comment period um, that is currently in place. The policy currently in place, um, it 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 simply cannot stand. We have to have a citizen comment policy uh, at the beginning uh, of the meeting, where I've traditionally always seen it um, uh, in my experience representing public entities uh, for the last 25 years. We have to change it so a citizen can feel comfortable and welcome uh, to express any comments or concerns. Uh, it's not, I don't believe, the best practice to sort of react uh, to citizen comments right away. Uh, if issues arise, it's best for uh, uh, the council to refer some issues to staff to investigate, um, but uh, and then make recommendations about how to integrate uh, those comments, those concerns. Uh, I think providing a respectful, welcoming, approachable council in order to listen uh, to the citizens is, is an important approach. You know, we can also uh, uh, have a, a, a very, um, uh, you know, a citizen comment policy that allows people to speak when an agenda item comes up. But either way, um, I need to feel like I'm hearing uh, the citizens and what they're saying. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Kara Reese. I think that the citizen um, comments part and just receiving comments from the community could be vastly improved at the council level. I think that at this point, we basically need a leadership change at council, and that's part of why I'm running for mayor. Um, the citizens' comments are just not being respected. It's not civil. The feedback given is not respectful. It doesn't make citizens feel comfortable. It doesn't make them feel like they're proud of their government. They're proud of their city. We have to be respectful. We're a community and we have to work together. My comments at city council meetings were that public comments should be at the, remain at the beginning of the meetings, it's critical. This is the first amendment right of these people and we need to maintain that and fight for it. Um, there was also a policy against citizen behavior at meetings, which I found to be distasteful and a bit off setting because it wasn't respectful to residents. You know, there were city council members making disrespectful comments and yet there was um, I think that you know we need to be responsive to, to comments we need to incorporate them into our policies and look at these comments and then apply it to the general welfare the citizens are why we're here and if we're not listening to them if we're not understanding their needs then we're not doing our job thank you thank you any additional comments, Mark? Uh, yes, I, I do. I think it's important for um, uh, the citizens to express their concern. Citizen comment period uh, is critical, but an opportunity for engagement and uh, an opportunity for a citizen to say, hey, I had my opportunity and I was heard and I felt like I was heard and and that means a lot and in addition to um, referring that for investigation and then potentially potentially implementing um, those issues into city city policy and city development thank, thank you thank you any additional Are you to get feedback from the community and just double check what we're doing. Um, we, we should be basing policies based on these comments because we represent these people. And so our policies, our decisions, our plan approval should be respectful of what the community thinks and we should engage the community. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. It goes to you first, Kara. How well do you think the city and the North Oaks Homeowners Association work together? And how can that relationship be improved? 
North Oaks is a very interesting community. We have a governance system where we have a strong homeowners association and then we have the city governance, which is more of the administrative arm, taking care of emergency response, utilities, etc. The relationship should be collaborative, but we each have our own area of authority and we have to be careful not to be crossing over certain lines. The reason for that is we don't want to erode the privacy. We don't want to violate how we were established, which is to establish a strong private community. So working with NOAA, there's many opportunities. We have to find common ground. We have to find common goals. So policing, I think it's both, it's important for both sides. Maybe protecting natural resources. We have a, a natural resource commission, you know. There are opportunities to work together. How do we do that? We start discussion, we start dialogue, we identify areas, and then we go back to our ordinances, our state statutes, and we start making sure that where we can to obtain and meet that common goal with NOAA. Um, I don't think we're doing enough today to be supportive of them. And I definitely would like to improve the relationship with NOAA, all the board members, and get their feedback. That would be a priority for me. But basically opening up discussion and then figuring out where we can work together. That's what I would like to do if I'm elected mayor. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Mark Asman. Oops. Uh, particularly these relationships for there to be communication, for there to be discussion, for the parties to meet. And so uh, one of the uh, key uh, goals I would see would be for uh, the mayor and the president of the homeowners board to meet on occasion, uh, but with regularity, maybe monthly. What's happening? What are the issues? What can we do? What, what do you need us to do? Uh, things like that. I think it's also important for the city administrator to same deal what are the issues what are the concerns you know it, this, these don't have to be lengthy time-consuming items but uh, it allows the parties to communicate it allows the parties to build a relationship and and in that uh, work for the betterment of each I think it's also important to understand that yes it's true uh, and we can never forget that the city has distinct statutory duties and obligations and NOAA has distinct uh, obligations within the deeds and the declarations that, that control uh, our community. And we need to come together, recognize what their individual obligations and duties are, see where there's some overlap, and, and, and work uh, to see if there's an ability to um, uh, enhance each other's work. But sometimes each has to do uh, what the other uh, may also uh, be doing, but there because there's overlap. But we have to collaborate. We we have to communicate. We have to have those relationships, and that's where we get along and, and move forward more positively. Thank you. Any additional comments, Kara? None. Then I think we'll move on to the next question, and it goes to Mark first. What qualification do you think sets you up, sets you the most apart? from the others seeking this office? <clears throat> I think the, the qualifications that set me apart uh, have to do with the oath of office. The, and it's, it's one of the things that I find to be so very important for our city leaders. I have to faithfully discharge the role beliefs and I have to um, um, uh, respect uh, myself uh, in the decisions that we're making. I have to be transparent uh, with my colleagues on the council, with my colleagues uh, at NOAA, with the staff uh, at the city. I have to be respectful to city uh, residents. Uh, I have to be um, respectful and uh, honest with my uh, co-council members. Um, I have to be transparent uh, and, and working together. And again, this comes back to making sure there's no surprises, making sure there's no last minute um, uh, uh, surprises on, on what council members may be doing uh, without telling anybody. And so this collaborative approach, uh, this respected approach, a transparent approach is to here's our common goal, let's talk about it, 
let's move forward um, uh, and do it in a manner uh, that's prudent, reasonable, and first and foremost, go back to the oath, uh, honest in belief and purpose. It's so very critical for our city leaders. Thank you. Thank you. The question now goes to Kara Reese. Um, so my one opponent, opponent this evening, Mark Asmund, does a good job on the Planning Commission. I think he's done a, a nice job listening and allowing the residents to speak. Why do I stand out as a leader? Because um, I don't just check boxes. I'm able to look at the entire situation with a great deal of research and involvement in due diligence, and then step back and say, what is the best for our community? You know, what is the best um, that we can do for planning, for health, for safety of our community? And so I'm able to go into the gray areas and maybe do some more digging, maybe access experts, which we should be doing to make sure that we have the best information. And I would also not plan things back to back. I would give the community more time. I wouldn't be afraid to deny plans, you know, if something is missing, if, if a study is expiring, that water tables are high. I would definitely take the, the opportunity and look at, did we do all testing? Are we being respectful to citizen feedback? Are we considering everything when we're doing our job? I would also be very good at maintaining civility of the discussions. One of the roles of mayor is to make sure that the proceedings are conducted civilly. And I would make sure that not only are the civil, the council members civil to one another, we're very civil and respectful to the residents. Thank you. Thank you. That was our last question. And we'll now move on to closing statements and we'll go in the reverse order of opening statements. And so we begin with Kara Reese. Oh, just a, just a second. <laughs> while, you get, while you dig it up. <laughs> right. um, it's time for a change. I'm running for mayor of North Oaks because I love this unique community and I will bring respectful, transparent leadership back to you. I feel so strongly about listening that I will establish regular office hours your thought you deserve to be heard and better access to information and always have a microphone at meetings. My priorities are safety and security, natural resource conservation, compliant development, and responsible budgeting spending. My work on council shows my commitment to my priorities and respect for our residents. Community where we share on trails and enjoy outdoor recreation. I look forward to working together with you as we continue to grow as a community for years to come. It's time for a positive change. Now with his closing statement is Mark Asman. Thank you very much. Uh, as a 35 year plus resident of the city, uh, I'm very familiar with our deeds, our declarations, our commitment to privacy, the, the need for solitude uh, at home. I'm committed, I'm committed to um, listening uh, to the community, to uh, um, uh, implementing the duties of mayor, uh, consistent with the oath, with honesty and belief and purpose, uh, and, and uh, addressing with civility uh, the, the uh, other council persons. I think that's a very important uh, aspect. Uh, the existing council, for whatever reason, uh, has trouble getting along. There needs to be some new you know, leadership situation that can, can, that can stop that, uh, that can move forward in a collaborative fashion where we get along and we move forward realizing that we have the same common goals uh, with our community. We're still neighbors, we're still friends, we hope, uh, and we still have uh, the same uh, purpose uh, to, for the betterment of the community. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our forum for the candidates for North Oaks Mayor. Thank you candidates for coming forward to run and speaking to voters about issues. Thank you to our viewers for watching and for your interest in being informed voters. We will put all of our forums on our YouTube, YouTube channel. You will find links to recordings for all of the candidate forums on the uh, League of Women Voters White Bear Lake Area website, which is www.lwv-wbla.org. You can request an absentee ballot now 
on the Secretary of State's website, which is MinVotes. Vote or update your registration. You can also do that online or when you go to vote. Make your voice be heard in the general election by voting by November 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.